Michael Amosun, presented to you the Black and White Law Series. It's good to have you back here. This project is due for a year now, since it has been started last year. The aim of this project is to be, is to su supplement our class notes um, for law lawyer inequity and young lawyers across Nigeria. Today I will be talking about aspects of law. Amidst many areas of law, we have the aspect of law and the classification of law. When we talk about the aspect, we are talking about divine law, natural law, eternal law, human and positive law. While on the other side of classification, we can have the civil law, the corporate law, the criminal law, and many, many other types of law. But today, for the purpose of people who are trying, who are just starting the study of law, we are going to be talking about the aspects of law. Why is this very important? As Louis II, also known as Baron de Montesquieu, um, in the spirit of the law 1748, explained the necessity of we having a law um, that is very peculiar to each terrain in their different time. He quoted and said, Law in the wider condition is any necessary relation arising from the thing of nature. In this sense, every law, every human have their laws. The deity is law. The material world is law. Intelligence superior to man is law. The beasts, their law, and man is law. The essence of the studying aspect of law helps further in the study of jurisprudence, particularly for lawyer and equity, still early at the study of law. Then what are the four areas of law and how do we then differentiate each of them? We have the eternal law, the divine law, human and positive law. Each of them has where they have where they overlap, and some of them have their own sharp differences. The first among them, eternal law, it is the driving base of every other rational human law. That is to say, these are the laws that have existed from time and it is seen as the foundation of many other laws. In essence, it is constant, it is universal, and it is everlasting. In its right. Then what is divine law? Divine law particularly is most likely, mostly seen as a revelation, seen as the law of God, one that is enshrined in the holy books, particularly in the Bible, um, believed to have been given by, by God to man. The essence of divine law is that man in his sinful nature is unjust and cannot make a, a, good, a just law for themselves. Hence, need to turn to a superior being called God Almighty to give him a perfect guidance for law. In the book of Exodus chapter number 20 from verse 1 to 17, we can see the outlining of all the laws that were given by God to Moses. And that is the basis of where divine law comes from. That is the instruction given and that has to be followed over time. People have argued further to say that from this spirit of law, divine law, has been where many other rational laws stemmed out. For example, Verse 17 of Exodus 20, chapter uh, verse 1, says that one should not covet his wife, his neighbor's wife or house. Then we can say that okay, that brought out law of trespass. We can say that brought out law of sexual assault, amongst many others. You may not, you must not covet your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's house. You don't trespass where you're not supposed to go to, and that is just one. Hour. Then after this, then we have the natural law. Then what is natural law? These are the one that's wired. In, by default to nature, to human being, to everything that exists on the space of the earth. This one, by nature and observation of men, I've seen that this is how it has been wired and programmed, and nothing can change them. Law that governs gravity. Law that governs that when you are hungry, you have to eat. Laws that govern that when you are feeling asleep, you need to sleep. There is nothing you really can do to actually like alter it because it's also a state of nature. So from that, Man has been able to observe and make laws out of them, the law of gravity, the law that guides planetary movement, and so many more. In essence, natural law is nothing but a participation in the eternal law by rational creature. We believe that all laws are eternal because of the way it has been wired from the outset of time. But then the human being then observed nature and saw that by night, people tend to sleep. Then they made a law, they, there is a law governing that. They observe that when you are hungry, you eat. Then that's a law made from that observation. They saw that anything that goes up automatically comes down. Then they created a law that actually like 
reverberated that observation. So in essence, natural law is just nothing but just a participation of rational creature in eternal law, in essence. Particularly to note, natural law is regarded as a body of moral rule and the principle of human conduct deducible by reason and discoverable by nature. In furtherance, Cicero, in his quote about natural law, um, that explains the body and spirit of nature. He quotes and says, True law is right reason in agreement with nature. It is of universal application, unchanging and everlasting. It summons to duty by its command and averts from wrongdoing by its will, and does not lay its command upon good men in vain, though neither do have any effect on the to try to alter this law, nor is it allowable to repeal any part of it, or it is impossible. We cannot be freed from this obligation by the senate of the people, nor do we need to look outside of ourselves for an expander or an interpreter of it. And there will not be different law at Rome and at Athens, and there will be one universal law valid for all times and all nations. And there shall be only one ruler, that is God over us all, who is the author of this law, his prorogator and his enforcing judge. In essence, natural law is wired into nature. Nothing can be done in essence to change it. It is universal. In London, the sun sets and the, the, the sun sets every day. There is nothing we can do about it. In America, when night comes, the day breaks. There is nothing we can do about it. In Canada, people get hungry and they just have to eat, except they have one sickness. There is nothing they can do about it. The same thing that I obtained in Nigeria is obtained in the United States of America. Same thing of things there is obtained in India. The same thing applies. It is a natural thing. It cannot be abolished. It cannot be repealed. It is not allowed to abolish any part of it. It is what has been obtained at every time, every point in time. And God only is the one who authors this law and is promulgator who created everything and is enforcing judge. Now let's speak, let's speak about human or positive law. Human and positive law can also be called the Austinian type of law. In essence, it's law as laid down by authority of the society. According to Professor H. Eliot, law is a command and has no connection with ethics or morality. That is to say, if the government of Nigeria comes tomorrow and makes a law that everybody must pay their tax, as much as it gets the effect of a law, it's a sin for anyone who withholds from paying his or her tax. So whether or not it is moral or ethical, what Professor H. L. is saying, in essence, is that it is a law as far as it's been given by the legitimate government of the day, by the person who is powerful enough to actually enforce that law. Then in that sense, it's a command and it's not, a, it's not, it's not an advice, it's not a suggestion, it's a command and everyone has to follow. The essence of positive law is based on legal positivity. It is believed that Jerry Bentham is the father of legal positivity. People in this category include Justin, Don Austin, Joseph Raz, Ed McConnick, and Ronald Brocken. Jerry Bentham is, Bentham is seen as the father of legal positivity. I mean, in essence, what human and positive law is, as, as the name implies, is that man makes this law and it has nothing to do with ethics or moral as much as as the effect of law and as, as an enforcer, as a punishment, it is a law and must be followed as such. In essence, it is the lex latter, not lex ferendi. Thank you very much for watching my video today. Like the button if it has been very helpful to you and subscribe if you can. Thank you very much.